Welcome, my wondrous students, to chapter 20, where I'll be introducing you to numerous oxidation and reduction reactions. After thoroughly surveying this chapter, I discovered that it introduces or covers 28 total reactions. However, 17 of them are ones that you've already learned in previous chapters. So in reality, for chapter 20, you really only have to learn 11 new reactions and then remember 17 others that you already should know. In my typical style, I wish to begin by sharing a personal anecdote that has absolutely nothing to do with our subject. Back when I was in college, a roommate and really good friend of mine, who's currently a professor at Florida State University, actually, cornered me in our crusty old apartment and said, Mike, I've just heard the most amazing song ever. It's absolutely incredible! He then went on to provide me with a lengthy introduction to this song. He told me that it was revolutionary, that it would bring silence to the earth, calm to the heavens, peace to weary souls, that it would align the planets and stars and make all nations who heard it throw their weapons to the ground for the rest of all eternity. With such an introduction, I naturally looked at my friend and said, Okay, what's the song? I was expecting the most amazing musical triumph I'd ever before heard. He played it on our stereo, and I was blown away. Not because it was that great of its song, but because I thought that my friend had gone certifiably insane. <clears throat> I looked at him closely and realized, having known him for many years, that he was being completely serious. He really believed that this song had the power to do the things that he described. The song, just so you know, is one performed by the hip-hop artist Jay-Z. It's entitled H to the Izzo. H to the Izzo, V to the Izzy. I mean, honestly, in light of the mind-blowing introduction my friend had given me, I don't think I would have been any more shocked if he had played Who Let the Dogs Out? <laughs> by the end of this chapter, you should be able to do each of the following things. You should be able to know the oxidation and reduction reactions reviewed in sections 20.1 and 20.2. Know the products formed by the following reactions. Sodium borohydride, lithium borohydride, and diabol hydride reductions. Chromium oxidations, Bayer Villiger oxidation, Sharpless oxidation, osmium tetroxide oxidation, cleavage of 1,2-diols, and alkenes. You should also be able to apply this knowledge to total synthesis. As I mentioned earlier, this chapter contains 28 reactions, 17 of which you've learned before. While covering this chapter, I will not be teaching you any reaction mechanisms. The reason for this is that I don't require you to know the reaction mechanisms for the 11 new reactions covered. To review the mechanisms that I do want you to know from the 17 reactions that we've already learned, I invite you to refer to my earlier lecture videos and notes. First, I wanted to remind you of something I taught you back in Chapter 4. The proper way to define reduction and oxidation. You may remember from general chemistry that a simple way to define reduction is gaining electrons. Conversely, we can define oxidation as losing electrons. An easy way to remember this is by remembering that Leo the lion says grr. That is, Losing electrons is oxidation, and gaining electrons is reduction. Another way to remember it is by remembering this mnemonic, oil rig. Oxidation is losing, and reduction is gaining. Now, during my early years of organic chemistry study, I frequently saw professors refer to certain reactions as being oxidation or reduction reactions, but it wasn't really obvious to me at the time that any thing was gaining or losing electrons. As a result, I gradually assembled a short list of additional ways to spot reduction reactions and oxidation reactions without or in circumstances where it isn't obvious who's gaining or losing electrons. So here are my additional ways of being able to quickly spot reduction reactions. If you see something gaining bonds to hydrogen, losing bonds to oxygen, or losing carbon-carbon double or triple bonds, most likely that process is a reduction reaction. Conversely, if you see a reaction in which a molecule gains bonds to oxygen, loses bonds to hydrogen, 
or gains double or triple bonds, then we can typically define those reactions as being oxidation reactions. With that said, I'm now going to bombard you with reactions. As I prefaced earlier, I will not be covering any reaction mechanisms here because one, I've already taught you all of the mechanisms I want you to know for the reactions in this chapter that we've already learned. And two, because all the new reactions in this chapter have mechanisms that are more complicated than I require you to know for, to meet the objectives of this course. Hence, as monotonous as it may seem, I want you to obediently memorize, like automaton robots, the reactions that we'll cover in this chapter. What reactions we start with, what reagents we add, and what products they form. We'll now begin by covering the reduction reactions introduced in section 20.1. So here's a reaction that you learned back in chapter 4, alkene hydrogenation. Thus, if I take an alkene, and I react it with hydrogen gas with palladium over carbon catalyst, it will add hydrogens to the alkene, converting it into an alkane. The question is, is this reaction an oxidation or a reduction? Well, it might not be super obvious when you look at this process that any one has gained or lost electrons. But if you remember uh, my additional ways of being able to spot that from the previous slide, you can see that in this process, my alkene gained bonds to hydrogen. It also lost a carbon-carbon double bond. So by two definitions, we can see that this is a reduction reaction. Here are some more reactions covered in section 20.1 that we've also learned from previous chapters. As you may remember, we can take a ketone and react it under these conditions to completely remove this oxygen and replace it with bonds to hydrogen. This reaction is called the Wolf-Kishner reduction. Is it really a reduction? Well, once again, it might not be completely obvious if anything has gained or lost electrons. But if we go by my definitions from the previous slide, we can see that in this process, I have lost bonds to oxygen and gained bonds to hydrogen. Thus, we can say, yes, this is a reduction. Similarly, from chapter 18, we learned that if you take an aldehyde or a ketone and treat it with sodium borohydride followed by acid quench, you can convert it to a primary alcohol. Is this an oxidation or reduction? Well, we can see that in the starting material, I've got two bonds between this carbon and this oxygen, and I move over to a product that only has a one bond, a single bond between this carbon and this oxygen. I've also gained an additional bond between this oxygen and hydrogen. Thus, by those two definitions, this is indeed a reduction reaction. 